This is the fourth of four meetings for the 2021 budget. My name is Chris Schumacher. I am the Manager of Communications and Engagement for the Cowichan Valley Regional District. And I am happy to be here uh, along with many other people upon the unceded traditional territory of the Coast Salish peoples. I would like to introduce our staff that we have here this evening. Uh, first and not least, Talitha Soldera, our Assistant Manager of Finance for the CPRD, who will be leading our presentation this evening. We also have Natalie Weiner, our Chief Financial Officer with us this evening. Um, Brian Carruthers, our CAO, is here with us, as is Mark Kieber, our General Manager of Corporate Services. Uh, and in no particular order, we have for our elected officials, Mr. Director Ben Martman, Area H. Thank you for joining us. We have Director Smith from Area G. We have Director Morrison from Area F. Director Yanni DiNardo from Area D. And Director Wilson from Area C. So thank you to the staff and elected officials for joining us. Uh, for those attendees who are joining us, we have the ability to ask questions always available in your right-hand panel in the Q&A function, uh, as well as the chat function, which allows you to talk to the host, myself, the presenter, or any of the panelists at any given time. And without further ado, we're gonna pass it over to Ms. Soldera, who will present the presentation of the 2021 budget. Thank you very much, Chris, for the, as soon as Chris passes me over presenter duties, I will share my screen. I will give a brief presentation, uh, an overview of the budget and the specific impacts on areas G, H, and the town of Ladysmith. And then we will have plenty of time for questions. The presentation will only take about 15 minutes. And so I'm just going to share my screen with you today. All right, so here at the CVRD, we have four municipalities and nine electoral areas. And in 2021, we have 178 services or functions that we provide. There are a number of competing challenges and expectations that the board must balance when setting the 2021 budget, including how to meet the needs of the public under increasing financial constraints, Increased downloading from other levels of government, resulting in increasing pressure to provide additional services. Aging infrastructure and increasing construction costs that exceed the consumer price index. Legislative changes and higher requirements for standards of care that put increasing cost pressures on existing services. Increasing non-controllable expenditures such as hydro and insurance. The board must weigh all of these when deciding on the 2021 budget. CBRD provides a variety of services to different partners, and therefore the impact of our budgeting process on each electoral area or municipality is different. For example, the cost of the average home in electoral to the average home, excuse me, in electoral area H, which, which participates in 23 functions, is $779.85. But the average home in Ladysmith, which participates in 19 functions, is $359.03. But Area H also has two specified areas encompassing a variety of services such as fire protection and recreation. To complicate matters, some services are provided directly by the CVRD, others in partnership with other organizations, and some take the form of grants to organizations that provide services to the area. The CVRD does not provide education, sidewalks, curbs and gutters, roads, policing, healthcare, or highways. These are all provincial services or municipal in the case of roads and policing in some instances. For most of our services, taxation or requisition as we call it, is allocated based on assessed value. Each member municipality and electoral area share is calculated based on assessed values that are provided by BC assessment. 
And within this, the distribution between the property classes is determined using a fixed ratio that is mandated under provincial legislation. Requisition represented almost 43% of the total revenue in 2020. The funding for each service is determined in the establishment bylaw for the service. And with so many services, there's a wide variety of funding mixes used. We can, however, broadly categorize the main types of service funding as regional, electoral area, sub-regional, and specified area. Regional services are funded based on assessment for all 13 jurisdictions within the regional district and are typically services that benefit the entire region, such as solid waste management or emergency 911. Electoral area services are specific to the rural areas only and are therefore shared by all participating electoral areas on an assessment basis with no municipal funding participation. An example of this is community planning where the CVRD performs this function for the electoral areas, but not the municipalities. The X on our chart indicates that the entire area participates, while the O represents a portion of the area. And this chart is available on the CVRD's website. Many of our services are sub-regional in nature in that they provide a service for certain areas within the CVRD and funding is shared by those participating partners, normally on an assessment basis. An example of this in this uh, area is Safer Futures. Specified areas are set up to fund services that are provided to a number of properties that do not represent the entire electoral area and are different in that these functions are established in response to a petition by property owners to provide service. A service area is established to encompass the properties that receive the service, such as the Salt Air Fire Protection Service. While taxation is a major component of CVRD's revenue base, the CVRD has a few other revenue streams. Non-taxation revenue streams that are considered as part of the budget process include user fees and charges for curbside recycling of garbage pickup and our utilities functions, permits and licensing fees such as building permits and subdivision fees, reserve funds, the CBRD accumulates operating reserves to protect against variances and unexpected expenditures from year to year, and capital reserves for its long-term asset management needs. We have grants, and wherever possible, we fund the use of projects through grants, and proceeds of borrowing. Borrowing can only be used for capital purposes. In recent years, we've taken advantage of low interest rates to borrow short-term in order to fund capital purchases but we also bore a long-term for larger, longer-term capital projects. As I mentioned, several services funded with other revenue sources include the Community Health Network, Municipal MFA Debt, our curbside garbage and recycling service that we talked about, sewer, water, and some of our street lighting and drainage services. The current budget approach at the CVRD is incremental meaning that current activities and staffing levels are considered as core and are used as a baseline for the upcoming budget. This approach uses core expenditures as the basis for the preparation of the draft budget with requests to changes to existing service levels being treated as supplemental requests to the commissions and committees for their consideration. Core expenditures are defined as those that are required to maintain the current levels of staffing, services, and capital including reallocations of resources within operational budgets that do not require an increased requisition. Supplemental requests for the purpose of budgeting are defined as items that are additions to current staffing and or service levels, and any capital that requires an increase to requisition or user fees. This includes purchases or construction of new capital, the addition of part or full-time staffing positions, and changes to programs or services requiring increases to user fees or requisition. For 2021, staff was directed to target a 0% requisition increase. In some services, such as Solid Waste and the Vancouver Island Regional Library, this was not possible due to existing service contracts. An exemption from the 0% mandate was provided for these services. Any increases above 0%, other than those for a service specifically exempted, would require a business case for the committee's consideration. The board has had a few budget meetings in 2020 and has considered some of the supplemental requests. 
After each meeting, the CVRD budget website was updated to reflect the decisions made at that meeting. And with all the decisions made to date, the budget currently includes a requisition increase of 1.95%. The remaining supplemental requests will be considered at a meeting tomorrow. And if all of these are approved, the requisition increase would be 2.31% for the year. The board will then hold a meeting on January 25th to review all the decisions that have been made and to propose any further changes to the budget before the financial plan bylaw is brought forward for adoption in February. The increase to requisition is discussed as a total number. However, as previously mentioned, the effects on individual properties varies based on a number of factors, including property assessment and property location. Only the participants in a service area uh, contribute to the cost of providing the services. This slide shows the impact on each municipality and electoral area of the 2021 budget, as well as the impact if all supplemental requests and business cases are approved. So you can see the impact of both the 1.95% and the 2.31% budget that have been discussed. So what does this mean for you? Well, in electoral areas G, H, and the town of Ladysmith, the largest changes are for the solid waste function, followed by an increase in the regional parkland acquisition function. The electoral areas will also see an increase for Vancouver Island Regional Library. These increases are partially offset in the electoral areas by a decrease to the electoral area services function. Specifically in area G, uh, the average home would see an increase of $17.04. So this chart, which is available on the CVRD's website, shows how the tax requisition is broken down for each function and what the changes are for each of those functions. So area H, homeowners, the average home would see an increase of $21.13. And in the town of Ladysmith, the average home would see an increase of $14.68. More information about this and about all of our budgets can be found on the CVRD's draft budget website. So there are a number of detailed schedules available on the CVRD website, providing total budget information, as well as detailed financial information on each of the services. The majority of schedules look at changes in property taxation. Parcel tax information and user fee information is provided in separate schedules. I'll just take you on a brief walkthrough of all the schedules that are available. So our schedule A shows the changes in tax requisition. It shows only services that have a change and it details the amount of the change for that service. Down at the bottom, and I know it's small, but you can see it bigger if you look on our website. Down at that bottom is the total difference between the general tax requisition for 2020 and that for 2021. This does not include the change for local area services, which affect only specifically defined areas. Schedule B shows the change in tax requisition by jurisdiction. There's a column there called change due to other jurisdictions, and this reflects the increase in the library requisition, which is applicable only in the electoral areas. Also down at the bottom of this schedule is the change in local service area taxes, such as the fire service areas. Schedule C shows the change in requisition going back to 2014. Now, I mentioned that the potential increase would be 2.31% for 2021, and that would be the lowest increase that the CVRD has had since 2014. For Schedule D, there's a page for each jurisdiction. This schedule lists only the services that the area participates in and shows the change for that service. Down at the bottom, it also includes the local service area taxes that are applicable in that jurisdiction and the change in those as well. And Schedule E, which we looked at previously for, on one of the other slides, also has a page for each jurisdiction and shows the impact for an average home in that area. Our Schedule F is a summary of the short and long-term debt. Schedule on our website has not been updated yet for 2020 as we haven't yet finished all of our 2020 transactions. There's still some items which need to be updated. And as we complete our year end, we will update the schedule, probably closer to the end of January. Similar to Schedule F, our Schedule G has not yet been updated and reflects the values as at December 31st, 2019. Where, as I said, we're in the middle of finishing our year end transactions and we'll need to make changes to the schedule to include transfers 
to from reserve and to reserve that have happened as a result of items completed in 2020. So it will be updated closer to the end of the year. Schedule G shows our capital reserves and has another uh, section for our operating reserve balances. Again, this will be updated as we finish our year end processes. Schedule H shows assessments by jurisdiction for three years. You'll notice that it has the 2020 values on it. The 2021 revised rule, which is what we base our tax rates on, is not released by BC assessment until March 31st. So all the budget calculations to date have been done using the 2020 revised rule. Schedule I shows how the requisition for an area is split between the property classes. So in this case, the example is for electoral area A, and you can see that business represents 13.43% of the total requisition, where residential pays 84.51%. There is a separate schedule available for each area. Schedule J shows the cost for a $100,000 home and shows the portion of total assessment represented by each area. Our parcel taxes for sewer and water are shown on Schedule K, and our user fees for sewer and water systems on Schedule L. It's important to note that an increase in parcel taxes or user fees for a service does not necessarily mean an increase to the property owner. In many cases, new properties have been added to service areas, increasing the total amount collected without having an impact on individual properties. The numbers shown in these schedules are the total amounts to be collected and do not reflect individual property charges. So those are our detailed budget schedules available on our website. We also have more specific detail on each of the individual services. For each of the 178 services, there is a summary sheet which gives a description of the service, lists the amount being requisitioned for 2021, the maximum amount that may be requisitioned if applicable, and shows the split between the participating areas. This is followed by the proposed five-year financial plan for the function. And lastly, we have the budget detail straight from our accounting software. It shows the actual expenses from 2018 and 2019, the 2020 budget, and the 2021 proposed budget. All of this information is available on our website to provide you as much information as possible. And now I will stop sharing my screen and we can take any questions. Thank you so much, Talitha. What a great presentation. Uh, I'd like to pose questions to our attendees. And looking at the list, first up, we have Lynn DeVries. And I would like to allow Lynn the opportunity to ask a question. Do you have one, Lynn? Hello, Lynn. Oh, hi there. How are you? Hi. Uh, no, I'm just, uh, I was just curious. Um, I'm out in Yellow Point in Area H, and I was just looking at the, uh, just uh, watching the budget process. I um, have a long background in municipal um, government. So uh, just, yep, just curious. Uh, the only question I might have is I would be curious for Area H what the average um, home actually is. What is what is the uh, what is the uh, value of the average home in, in their age? Well, thank you, Lynn. Uh, Talitha, do we do we know what the average uh, home is right now? I mean, this just came out, but yeah. yeah. So so still, as I mentioned, based on the twenty twenty revised role, uh, the average home in the area age was valued at five hundred eighty nine thousand two hundred ninety six. And so that will definitely change based on the 2021 rule, but that's the number that we have for the 2020 revised rule. And that is available uh, on Schedule E for each, each of our areas. So you can see that number right on Schedule E, and it will be updated as the new assessments are available. Thank you, Talitha. Uh, next, I would go to Ms. Hebner. Do you have any questions? or comments for the board here. Miss um, Hepner, no? Okay. I will go back to uh, our list. 
Do any of our elected officials this evening have comment or question they want to present? Otherwise, I will turn to Talitha. Please do. Chris, there's a question in the Q&A section. Of course there is, and I haven't seen it yet. Apologies, I'm just going there now. Here we are. What is the CVRD doing to push back the downloading of services from the province and feds? I would turn that question over to our analyst. Sorry, potentially to our chair or board chair or vice chair if they're with us, but I don't know if they are with us. Do any of our elected officials want to take a stab at answering that question? I'm not seeing any hands here shooting up. Oh, Director Yanni Tenardo. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I would, um, it's up to the board, I think, to um, make sure that we, um, well, we sort of stay stick to our meeting and um, stick to what is our jurisdiction and our responsibility. And, and it's, it's basically up to the board. And if the province downloads something to us, we're basically mandated, but I think that um, we need to pay attention to that for sure. Thank you, Director Yanni Donardo. Do any other directors want to? Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, I'm going to go to Director Morrison and then to mm -hmm. CAO Carruthers. Uh, thanks, Chris. And, and it's a great question. And I can tell you that as long as I've been there and Lori's been there, we've been really aware of this. And even to the point where, where now there's a, a significant amount of grant dollars that are coming out the doors of the feds in the province we're even quite wary of of those because sometimes when you get grants it ends up building in unanticipated costs to uh administer or deliver or whatever that that can be long term so uh i noticed director yanni donardo nodding we we really do take a look at uh, you know when when we're getting grants, free money may not always be as free as it may seem, but when it comes to the specific downloading of of other areas jurisdictions, they haven't been trying to do that too much of that lately, but we're definitely on guard for it. Thank you, Director Morrison. Um, Director Wilson, was it you that had your hand up uh, as well? Yeah, I'm not sure about this one, but I would think that that's the kind of thing that we could possibly address um, when uh, the conferences come up, such as uh, uh, the UBCM, et cetera. It's something that I'm sure that other uh, jurisdictions are concerned about at all. And um, I would think, and, and I can be put right here by the more experienced people that uh, UBCM or other places um, such as uh, Vancouver Island Economic uh, Alliance as well uh, would be the places to bring this up and, and discuss and see what can be done about it. Thank you, Director Wilson. Uh, Mr. Carruthers, did you want to uh, chime in on that one? Sure. Um, yeah, Director Wilson was absolutely right. Uh, the ABICC, the Association of Vancouver Island and Coastal Communities and the Union of BC Municipalities are excellent venues and local governments over the years have always taken opportunities to to push back on potential downloading from the provincial and federal government. Uh, at a staff level, we also, um, I know my colleagues, the other chief administrative officers from around the province, when we become aware of initiatives that are coming from line ministries that uh, are pushing policy season and, and practices that are going to affect uh, costs uh, we as a group uh, will will um, uh, tackle it from a staff level with senior staff with the province as well so there's a number of angles that will come from uh, but uh, director morrison's correct there hasn't been so much downloading recently as there had been in the past but uh, there's all all different avenues including uh, all those that have been mentioned tonight
Thank you, Mr. Crothers. And I appreciate everybody for not participating in anything like what is displaying in my background here. Uh, I want to remind all residents that we are very much trying to apply by uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry's uh, rules. And, uh, and so thank you everyone for doing that. And those that participated in our meeting virtually, uh, all of our elected officials for taking their time out of their evenings to do this. And I uh, want to remind everybody that the opportunity to still provide input uh, exists by participating in PlaySpeak. We have a questionnaire up there, as well as several discussion questions uh, available for people. You can also uh, email directly to our finance division, and that's uh, Talitha's email, talitha.soldera at cvrd.bc.ca. And that information is available on the website at our CVRD finance uh, section, under our finance section, and the 2021 draft budget uh, page. Uh, you will find her contact information and a continued opportunity to provide input to our board around our budget. So thank you everyone for participating in our many budget deliberations. Thank you, Director Yanni Zanardo. Uh, Thank you to everyone for participating in all of these sessions. It has been incredibly valuable. We've heard some great questions and comments, uh, and we will see everyone again tomorrow to talk more about the budget. Good, Good job, Talitha. Thank you. That was easy. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks.